Yeah, so you've been welcomed pl plenty of times today, but now I officially welcome you to the 3D animation and visual effects presentation for the day. Uh, I hope that we can answer a lot of your questions about our program, the department, uh, and what your experience here would be like. Uh, as you know, as I was introduced, my name is Jimmy Calhoun. I'm the chair of 3D animation and visual effects. One note I would add is that this is the first year that our department's been titled 3D animation and visual effects. Before we were computer art, computer animation and visual effects. So if I say computer art today, forgive me, that's just old habits, dying hard, but we'll get there. Uh, and some of the media that you might see played today might reference the old title. Same department, same great taste, just a new, a new title. Um, yeah, so my job here is to, uh, just like our students work with software, I work with artists. I work with professionals who come and teach our students. I work with students. I find ways to bring them together and let them make magic. I just kind of walk away. So <laughs> just like that, today I hope to get our students up here soon talking to you so I can walk away and let you listen from them. Uh, I would like to show you, before I bring the students up, I'd like to show you a bit more about who we are. I always think a great way to do that is to show you some of the work that we've produced. So uh, we'll start with just a montage of some of the films from last year. So those are clips from the senior thesis films from last year. So that's a culmination of four years of work. That's not expected of you on day one. Uh, on day one, you begin uh, going down this path of the education that gets you there. So our degree is built out of 120 credits. 72 of those are in studio art within the production pipeline of 3D animation and visual effects. Uh, you also have humanities courses. Matthew mentioned a few of those, uh, as well as art history. And then you have miscellaneous credits. Uh, that's one additional class. Most of our students choose to take another studio elective within, with that additional option. Uh, our curriculum is very focused. It's very production-based. It's focused on all the different elements that go into making these types of films and work. Uh, so that's storytelling, animation, modeling, rendering, lighting. Uh, all the visual effects compositing that go into all of this. And I have a visual representation of that if you're not familiar with the pipeline. Maybe, maybe you just know that you want to work in visual effects or animation, but you don't really know what goes into that. Uh, 
it's a lot. <laughs> and this is, an, this is a way that we lay it out. Um, and it's kind of broken into three different sections. So uh, the first section is our pre-production. So within pre-production, this is the point where you're starting to get your idea, your story. You start designing what that's going to look like, storyboard out your visual narrative for that piece, uh, design it, and, and at this point you have a plan. You take that plan into the next phase, which is production. So this is where most of our students spend their time. This is our biggest focus, is, is this area of the pipeline. So teaching our students how to create that final look of the images that you see on the screen. So that's going to be modeling, surfacing, rigging, lighting, um, doing the animation, so making the characters move, um, and then uh, finding that final look, look dev of the piece. And then the next final third phase of this is post-production, which uh, again, we, we do a lot of focus here as well, and that's especially going to be with compositing, uh, where you take all the elements and bring them together. So if you're working with live action and some CG assets and pulling those together, our students learn how to do that, and that's a big part of the, the final phase for them. I have a video uh, that shows a breakdown of the VFX thesis film from a few years ago that can give you a better visual idea of what this might look like. And then I'm going to bring some students up to talk through their current project as well. But let's take a look at this. The spectrum with with more of the uh, live action look, uh, more realistic look. Uh, but to talk to you about the other end of that spectrum, I have three of our current seniors. They're going to come up and share with you their current work in progress on their thesis film. So please welcome Michelle, Tian, and JJ to talk about that. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming today and braving the weather. Thank you to the parents and to the students, and thank you for Jimmy for inviting us here today. And we're so excited to show you a little snippet of our thesis film, uh, Hair For You. So we'd like to meet the team. Uh, my name is Michelle. Uh, I am the director and the lead lighter, so that means I'm in charge also of the visual development, uh, character textures, lighting, and compositing. Um, I'm Tien. I'm the set's lead and producer, so I'm in charge of modeling, texturing, lighting, and comp, but mainly for environments. Hello, my name is Jihae Kim, go by JJ. I'm an animator and character TD of this project and are so responsible for the character modeling, animation, and rigging.
So our pitch of this movie is set in Indonesia. A young girl who despises getting her long hair combed is at odds against the insistent combing from her mother with cancer. So I'm not going to go through all of this, but this story was greatly inspired by my own experiences. I'm an international student, so I'm originally from Jakarta, Indonesia. Um, there is not a lot of representation of us, at least nice representation of us and our stories back home. So it was really important for me to show that. And I'm so grateful I get the opportunity to do that and have these people to support me. Um, ultimately, the story is also about just parents giving back. You know, your parents, they sacrifice a lot for you and they give a lot for you. And it's kind of just like, what is it like to give a little part of yourself back to them? So to start off with, it's like, okay, well, what do we want this thesis to look like? So we collected a mood board of movies that we really liked, that we really referenced from, real life sources as well. So we took pictures of Indonesia, big movies that we really, really always kind of look back to is like Encanto uh, and Turning Red and a whole bunch of other films that we love. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the characters. So when you start, you obviously have to make your characters and creating them, making concept art. So this was concept art that we made of our main character. Her name is Mira. Uh, so we wanted to make a character who was kind of naughty and mischievous. And we wanted to explore shape language that kind of shows that. You could tell with her hair kind of very wavy and wild. The next character is Mom, uh, even though she you don't really see her all that much in the movie, at least her face. We wanted to make sure she had a strong presence, um, but also shared a lot of likeness with her daughter. So this was some more uh, facial expressions that we were exploring with. This is also a character concept of mom that we inevitably changed later on to push the Indonesian look further. And I'm gonna pass it on to JJ. Yeah. So. Uh, when we started our production stage, the first thing we had to think of was a characters. As a character TD, I had to um, collect every resources um, related to the characters, and also had to improve my understanding of the character concept. So Michelle uh, started designing the character using traditional Indonesian uh, clothes and also pattern batik, and also the pink color we use the pink color to represent the breast cancer awareness. Yeah. So this was some more visual development on my end. We really wanted to push the Indonesian look over the summer. So we did a lot of concept variations of different um, batik designs and different shoes. Um, this was also something we did a lot is we would take our progress and I would do draw overs just so that we have a reference of like, okay, how do we push this to the next forward? So you can see we did draw overs of different hairstyles on the 3D model, uh, more concept variations. This was a different concept we had for her hair as well. And now I'm gonna pass it on to JJ. Yeah. <laughs> so we took inspiration from Disney and Pixar, especially Encanto was our main reference because it has a lot of good character design and um, also but regardless of the reference we had to think of like um, based on taste of our teammates and uh, also my understanding of the character so I need I we had a long conversation throw over the the summer vacation too it's like we had meeting every week and also the challenging part of this character was I had no experience to build the model, the child character before. So I had a lot of feedback from uh, our teammates about the proportion and also facial features. And sometimes I feel like, oh, I need more clear version of the feedbacks or like I wonder my director's idea of the co character concept. Then I asked to my teammates to draw over their feedbacks or like not on the screenshot of my model, yeah. Yeah, and also, so, oh, 
sorry. <laughs> so this is our character, um, Rick Mera, and also Wireframe. And I made this character with using Maya and ZBrush. And also I want to talk about uh, good things about SVA. I learned every skill. <laughs> <laughs> I learned every character's uh, modeling skill from SVA. Um, they offer a lot of good production, 3D production courses. Uh, also, they offer production class, which I learned character modeling and marvelous designer for the clothes. And also rigging uh, and, and X-Gen. Oh, sorry. So ZBrush, of course, and FX class. I want to talk about FX class more detail. Uh, I learned end clothes for cloth simulation and uh, exchange for realistic hair design, uh, just like you can see Disney and Pixar. And we had experience to determine uh, and determine, determine uh, which hairstyle is really well fit to our character design. And we choose polygon style hair because it has more stylized stylized and animation. And this is our pre-final version of Mira. And this is our Ma. We also just wanted over the process, there's something whenever we get stressed out, Tian will be in the group chat and be like, guys, have fun. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it, something that makes me have fun is to just like do little doodles of these characters to really kind of help remember like what is their personality like. So these were just some doodles that I would make on the side of just like, you know, when you're a little kid, you're like, ah, like <laughs> just like things kids would do or like how you would kind of like tease your mom. So these are really fun to do. Okay, so the environments of Hair For You. Hair For You takes place in the countryside of Java, Indonesia. So here are a bit of pictures of that. And with a lot of research and references and help from Michelle and her family, um, we've been in the process of integrating a lot of key Indonesian staples. Some of these include food stalls, vehicles, furniture, and even little household items. This is our latest kitchen render, and which we'll get back to because here are some more recent changes with added assets and experiments with stylization. This is our kitchen asset list, which uh, you can see gets pretty long but it's so important to stay organized, especially when you're working on a set that has this many props. And this is our GAN chart for the fall semester, just so that we know where we're at and staying on track. All right, yeah, the environments are great. It's so great to show them to my mom and have her be like, oh my God, that's my home. Like. <laughs> so it's really rewarding to have that. So I think for our final few bits, we're just going to show you a little process on my end, which is lighting, just to get a final look development of what our final look of what we want the film to be. So this is what we ended up with. This is kind of our final look dev that we always kind of refer back to lighting wise on like, okay, we want our phone to look like this. So we're pretty happy with this and we're really excited to keep going. And thank you guys so much for coming. If you are interested, you're welcome to follow us on Instagram and keep connected. Thank you. Right. Aren't they much more interesting than me? Uh, really, really exciting work. I can't wait to screen their work in April. We do a, a screening for industry professionals uh, in this theater, actually in the bigger theater across the, across the hall in April. And then we also do one online for uh, international uh, friends and industry professionals. 
So we definitely get the work out in front of everyone, and I'm looking forward to sharing theirs along with everyone else's. Uh, this work is being done in our facility that you will have an opportunity to come over after lunch and, and take a look. We'll be over there and uh, look forward to showing you more of that space. And uh, our faculty, staff, and students, and even our alumni uh, really build into this community, the community and who we are and what the work is. Even uh, our seniors begin working with alumni who come back and uh, will talk with them, uh, work with them as advisors uh, on their thesis films. So we, we really form a great community and, and place that people can work together uh, on all of these things. Uh, that includes student clubs. Uh, we have a number of student clubs that are, are ran by the students, they drive uh, these these clubs and uh, groups. What happens with them is really um, organized by those students. A lot of it is guest lectures from different industry professionals and uh, alumni who will come back and speak either in person or over Zoom, uh, as well as workshops. Uh, some of them are peer-led, some of them are from other people who will come in from outside of SVA or instructors. But all that's separate in addition to the classes that they're taking every day. Uh, and then a lot of our students will go on to do internships. Uh, we have uh, a lot of students who do them over the summer. It gives them a chance to go to those places. Uh, and then they come back. And in the fall, they'll, they'll bring back that new information that they've learned at their internships. And they'll be able to spread that amongst their peers. So those are really great opportunities for us as well. And then they graduate, and they go off, and they work for uh, amazing companies doing amazing things. Uh, and we stay connected to them. We do a lot of different events uh, to make sure that we don't, we don't let them go. Um, one of those things includes uh, an alumni film festival that happens here every September. Uh, so we'll screen movies, films, uh, and the alumni who worked on them will come back and talk to our students about their work on the films. Uh, we'll find opportunities to connect and, and uh, meet up with alumni. And yeah, it just it doesn't end, is what I'm saying. You can't escape us. Uh, but I do want to go back uh, to the very beginning. What you're here to talk about is joining us as students. So we have uh, five students who are going to come up and talk to you about their experience. Before I welcome them up, I'm going to show you some of their work so you can see uh, what they've been doing. So these students are all second and third year students. Uh, Michelle and Tian and JJ's work, senior work, very looking very advanced. But I want you to see what our second and third year students look like, what their work looks like. Also very advanced and exciting. So uh, we'll start with Samuel's work. Okay. What are you doing? Talking to God. Is he telling you to kill everyone? Yeah. No, that's Satan. Hi, Satan. Hi, boys. Hi. And you'll see as, as we go through these reels that our underclassmen have opportunities to work uh, with the seniors on their thesis films, and it gives them a great chance to uh, to see what it's like to follow direction of a supervisor or a director. Uh, next, we have Kimmy Ma's reel. Trees raise a fragile curve 
here's Katie's work. Next we have Sebastian. And last, maybe not last time. No. Here, here's Anna's work. Sorry. <laughs> You all come on up. Um, wonderful work. Give us one second. We're just going to pull some chairs over, and then uh, we'll start a conversation with our students. I also I love show, showing their work because I love how diverse our students' work is. Is like it really speaks to them as individuals, and it's just a great uh, representation of how unique and different we all are. And they do manual labor, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so before we open up to questions, I thought we could go down and introduce yourselves. Tell us your name. Tell us uh, maybe where you grew up. Tell us your pronouns. And tell us, I guess that's good for now. Start, start there. We can start with Sebastian. All right. Uh, my name is Sebastian Garcia. Oh, and what, what year what you're okay. studying? Or, yeah. For my international peeps, uh, Sebastian Garcia Valverde. Um, my pronouns are he, him. I'm a second year um, student. I grew up in Mexico City and then moved to LA when I was 13, and now I'm here. <laughs> Hi, guys. My name is Anna. I'm from Ukraine. It's my second year, too. And my pronouns are she, her. So, yeah. 
Hi guys, my name is Katie. Uh, I go by she, her pronouns, and I'm Jersey born and raised. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, but <laughs> I am also a second year student. Hi, I'm Samuel. You can call me Sam. I use he, him pronouns. I am a third year student, and I'm also from New Jersey, not unfortunately. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kimmy. I'm born and raised in China, and I'm the third year student. Cool. Um, start thinking about your questions. I'm going to start with one, and then uh, we'll open it up to you. If you have questions, you can raise your hands. Uh, Jake is here, and I think there might be another person over here. They have microphones. They'll come to you if you have questions. But just to get us started, I, wonder, I was wondering if any of you would mind telling us a little bit about your uh, portfolio that you applied to SVA with. Do you all remember what that looked like? Ooh, okay, I can start. Um, <laughs> I remember my portfolio being a lot of like traditional work, like a lot of like um, sketching and like just like sketching everyday things on like a sketchbook, also a lot of figure drawing, and then a lot of help that I got from, except, no, what's it called? Uh, portfolio Day. Um, I was in San Diego, and I saw SVA there. And they really recommended me that if I want to apply to uh, 3D animation, or at least like animation, that my portfolio should like incorporate aspects that relate to what you want to apply. So I had a couple of like um, animations that, had, that I had done in high school, either personal work or assignments that I had. So yeah, that's what my. I also feel if you guys finished some kind of summer course or something related to art and you have work that you've done there, for example, I've done the summer course in SVA two years before coming here, and it was very helpful to just include it there and just to make sure that you have something to, to put, right? Um, to be honest, I have never touched any 3D programs before coming to SVA. Like, even maybe the summer, even when I was accepted, I tried to do the Blender uh, donut tutorial, <laughs> which is like a canon event for no. every 3D student. But I kind of gave up halfway on that, too. But my uh, application here was mainly just so a bunch of drawings or paintings I did for, like, AP drawing. Um, I had like a little comic, which could be helpful because it's similar to storyboarding. Uh, figure drawings definitely are very uh, helpful because it shows that you know how to draw from life and not just from a picture reference. Uh, my portfolio was very unconventional in the fact that it was made in a week. Um, <laughs> aside from the limited animations that I had already done, I did a lot of rotoscope and I think that that's what helped me a lot. I did a lot of like full body animating over myself in like one app that I found on my iPad, but it was enough because it showed that I had an understanding of movement and an understanding of space. And having that in your portfolio, whether it's in animation itself or in a drawing is incredibly helpful. Yeah, unfortunately, Aspe is the only school that I applied to with um, animation, so all the other school I applied for are for illustration major. So all of my works are like either graphic design works I did for my A-level or like illustrations. But like mo all of my pieces, they have like a theme or a backstory, a really personal story that um, I want to tell. So I think probably the storytelling aspect of all my work did help me to get in here. Nice. Um, questions out there? Anyone have questions? I have more questions if they don't. <laughs> but this is your time, so I want to make oh, sure. Oh, also, as we like, you guys are here, hopefully, to learn. <laughs> but like, prior to coming here, they want to know that you're like a pretty well-rounded artist, like first of all, and then you can like tap into like what you want to get into. Mm -hmm. But like, showing a good understanding of motion and space and shape, language, it's really important. Yeah, I always say that having examples of composition and lighting in your in your portfolio is, is really great, for sure. I think I see a hand over here. Hello, oh, okay. Um, what has been the most uh, challenging thing that you've overcome here so far? Finals. 
<laughs> I, <know. Fine>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like all of the assignments are very manageable. So, and especially with our professors, which are amazing, there is no such thing as you don't understand how to do anything. It's just everything takes a lot of time. So you'll spend a lot of time just sitting on the computer and just doing the same thing over again, making sure you've done it right and all of that. So I'm, I'm not sure that there was like a challenge and maybe a patience can be a challenging, you know, but yeah, other than that, I feel like it's just, you need to, you need to have a good time management. You need to have a good understanding of what exactly you need to do. But other than that, yeah, yeah. there's no challenge that cannot be resolved. I feel like, um, I had the, the fortune of being in the same block as Katie and Anna. So freshman year. Freshman year, a lot of, like, you run into problems, but then, like, someone knows how to solve that problem. And I feel like the great thing about SVA is, like, you have a community of people that will, like, isn't going to, like, gatekeep, like, information. So, like, if they know how to solve an issue that you have, they'll, like, sit down with you and, like, tell you how to, like, fix it. And, yeah. I feel like, yeah, just patience is, is a big thing because, like, having your rake break in the middle of mm. of that it's not fun but it is tolerable <laughs> any other big challenges that um i would say that one of the big challenges is kind of hitting a learning curve uh i came in knowing nothing about 3d only knowing like the names of programs and boasting that i knew the names of the programs <laughs> so that's the thing um but Definitely, I kind of hit a wall when I realized, oh, I really can't do everything. So I struggled to find a niche that would entirely suit me. I turned to animation, but realizing my limitations was such a challenge because I came in here wanting to do everything. And I think one of my things in my reel shows that I did do everything and I thought I could and I couldn't. It got complicated. So patience with yourself. Yeah. It's also crazy because like, you can come in here like wanting to do something, and then you realize you don't like it that much, but you like another thing really like a, like a lot. So it's like you come in here wanting to do like animation, and then you like fall in love with modeling, which is like that's kind of like where I'm heading, I think. But I don't know. It's still yeah. early. The thing for me is that all I it took a whole lot of time for me to find my own direction because I come in, I only know about animation and I want to go to Pixar, but then I find out that I hate keyframes. So I <laughs> started doing modeling, but then modeling, I am not good at hard surface modeling and most of the stuff. So I, I think like maybe I want to do games and then I change to games and I luckily I found an internship with my Unreal um, portfolio. And then now I'm start le learning Houdini and VFX because I want to learn the whole spectrum of the, you know, film and animation and like just um, moving media. So yeah, I think like finding the passion in the area that you work, want to work on is definitely the hardest thing for me when I was in my starting years of uh, college. Nice. I see a question up there. Right up. Thank you. Um, I'm very curious just to hear the diversity, if any of you have had an internship, and then was it domestic or international? And given post-COVID days, if you did that all remotely, given technology, and how quickly you were able to find your internship um, as well. Thank you. I think you might be the main intern. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, I took a gap year after I, uh, the first semester of my freshman year because um, I w it was fully online. Um, I was uh, originally the class of 24, but then knowing that the first two years of my college years will be fully online, I'm really sad and I just don't accept it. So I just took some years, um, uh, took, took some time off um, the online courses and I um, went to a um, v VFX um, studio in China and I learned about like I was a branding intern which means I introduced a lot of new stuff for other um, people coming here and mainly um, showing them about like the virtual production kind of like pipeline even though like I wasn't doing any that kind of stuff because I wasn't qualified with all the skill set but um, ex by explaining to other people I 
just uh, have an interest rising in me that I want to learn this kind of stuff. So I took a class in Unreal Engine, and then I built my portfolio. And then last year, this uh, around this time, I see a post posted by um, SV Computer Art uh, on Instagram about like Blizzard, Activision Blizzard King is hiring some people. So um, uh, I just applied to that, and then I got in. And that was in person, right? It, it, it was in person in Carlsbad, California. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't, any of you intern yet? No, we definitely have, <laughs> like, I just saw someone slink out. He interned at Pixar this summer. I think he walked away, so I wouldn't call on him. Uh, and then uh, I know that, like, uh, we've had students, like a senior last year, she was interning for DreamWorks remotely while working on her thesis film. Uh, so it's still a mix of like in-person versus virtual. Uh, and the, the virtual internships, especially during the school year, are beneficial to our students because they can do those remotely without going somewhere else. But then I think in-person is probably a really great, a yeah. great opportunity. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we'll go here and then we'll go. I'm sorry. We'll go here and then we'll go back up there. I'll, I'll speak up. Uh, <laughs> I'm just an, an under, or I'd like to understand a little bit more about campus life. Living in New York, a lot of you aren't aren't from New Jersey, and just how you've adapted to it. All right. Well, um, <laughs> I. Uh, Despite being in New Jersey, I knew that I wanted to be very involved with a lot of things on campus life. The moment that I heard about, you know, the computer labs, I was like, there's no way I'm staying in New Jersey and passing up the opportunity to visit these incredibly powerful and useful computer labs. That and like, you know, social stuff, I guess. So um, for the first year, I lived in the 23rd dorm and it was, you know, 25 minute walk to my classes on a slow day and it, helped me kind of stay connected to my classmates, it helped me stay connected to my peers, I made a bunch of friends. Uh, and then same thing, last year I was in the 24th dorm, um, where again, I made friends who I'm now rooming with in an apartment of my own that we made sure was close to SVA so I could continue to do these things. It was definitely difficult to adapt in terms of, you know, I'm not used to the city. I, you know, I might have come from New Jersey, but I'm in like the boonies part of it, you know. <laughs> Drive 10 minutes out, you see cows. Um, so it was, it was definitely a very big shift, but it was a shift that I was able to conquer because I was in the area, I had friends and people who were willing to go out after class and explore the area and then walk with me to class to navigate things. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I'm from like central Jersey, so it's like the suburbs. Um, one thing that is very different from Jersey, but I like very much appreciate about New York is like, you don't drive. <laughs> I have my driver's license, but I hate driving. Like, <laughs> will not if I don't have to passenger princess all the way. Um, <laughs> so I really like the fact that the city is very walkable. Um, I will walk 40 minutes to Chinatown if I want, like, just to get something if I want to. Like, you'll get your steps in for sure here. <laughs> um, we also do have the public transportation and it's very convenient. Uh, one other thing that is kind of different is that like, because everything is so close, you're tempted to spend a lot. So manage your money because that will fly out your wallet. Do any of you participate in clubs or are you just going to class? And I go to clubs. <laughs> I'm in um, I'm in the computer modeling club, the women in animation club, the I'm a mentor this year for the Mars club. I'm in the SVA Horror Society and then I on a, yeah, I got a lot going on. I also on occasion will visit my friend started a club. Uh, my friend in 2D animation started a writing resource club where they write short stories all the time, so I have sometimes proofread for them. Um, yeah. There's, there's a lot of different clubs and definitely one of the big things that does help, again, being close to the dorms, they host club fairs around the dorms and around these areas. So it's very nice to get connected with people like that. Yeah, um, I'm also a part of Mars. My mentor is Michelle over there. Yeah, Michelle's my dad. Um, 
Um, we're also, all three of us are lab assistants at um, the SVA Computer Arts Department. Um, so, <laughs> oh, you, yes. yes, oh my god, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Yes, yeah, Sam is also a lab assistant. Um, so that also takes up a lot, like a decent amount of time. It's a good way to make money um, and also have an opportunity to do your work and you get just more involved with the people there. It helps you build a community. It's a great place to be. I'm also in, um, sorry. And then I want to make sure we get that question. Sounds good. I'm also in SV football club, which is like soccer, but like globally known as football. Where do you play? Where, where is there a football field? A soccer field? Um, just around. <laughs> Sometimes like we go to the Peters field, which is like two blocks down from 24th street yeah. residence. Um, when that's closed, we go s closer to Ludlow and we just like, it's just like, it, we encourage all skill levels to come and play. We just hang out on Saturdays at like one thirty and just <laughs> kick the ball around. Are you a goalie? What what position do you play? Well, we don't have enough no position to have a goal. I used to be a goal. I played competitive soccer in like el elementary through high school. And then I've just like kicking the ball around with some friends. All right, there was a question, right, Jake? Yes, thank you, Jimmy. Sorry. This is going to be the final question. Okay. And don't worry, if you have other questions, they'll be around, you'll, you'll see them later. Okay, so I had this one question about, like, if you had any struggles in freshman year, uh, could you give some insight on, like, how you, like, surpass that or give advice to upcoming freshmen that would, you know, want to come to the school and have, or might come across those issues? Ooh. <laughs> Make sure to have, uh, to be well connected. I would say go to the lab and spend as much time yes. in the laboratory as possible because you will be surrounded by people who know stuff. And yeah, if you uh, run into like any problem, the professors are always there for you, the students are always there for you. I feel like, I don't even know, what was, what was the, like the main struggle during? The main struggle? Um, we did like a first year so? film, mm -hmm. um, only having like one semester of like proper <laughs> teaching. It was just like encourage us to, I feel like SVA and our department is really pushing students to first try to figure out problems by yourself, then like ask your, your fellow, uh, peers and then like seek help from like faculty. But like, it really encourages you to make connections with people around you and around your age just because eventually we'll be peers in the professional field mm. and also um i don't is it still block system for yeah, yeah. okay yeah. for freshmen make sure you take advantage of that yeah. um try in the, to make, in the first year you end up kind of taking the same the five classes with the same group cohort of students in the first year so. yeah yeah I was in the same block as these lovely people. <laughs> and now we're besties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so make sure you make connections. Don't shy away from making friends and like saying hi to people and be friendly. I totally agree with that. Like make friends with your cohort. Like everybody in our cohorts, like we had a group chat and we would just text each other. It was really nice. It's really good to build community. Talk to upperclassmen. They know what they're doing most of the time. So like they can teach you a lot. And don't be afraid to ask questions from your professors either because that's what they're there for. They're there to help you learn. And if you're too scared to ask the questions, then that's not gonna happen. You're just gonna stay in the same place. You're there to push yourself. Everybody around you is going to be pushing you too, but you have to hold yourself accountable. And speaking of holding yourself accountable, try to make a schedule. I am a procrastinator. I'm a very anxious person, so I like to like, procrastinate and then let my anxiety fuel me through a couple all-nighters. But that's really not healthy for you. Um, make sure you do your work or at least plan out how you're going to space out your work because you are going to get a lot. There are going to be some late nights and that's just something you have to deal with. Um, one piece of advice, uh, something that I struggled with was putting myself on a linear path. Uh, I think a lot of people, like we, a lot of us come in with expectations for ourselves. That's not a bad thing to have. The problem is <laughs> we think 
I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to get here, when the truth is this is a very branching path. Uh, I think a lot of people struggle with changing and doing different things and wanting to do different things and finding passions for it. So introduce yourself to as many things as possible. Don't overwhelm yourself. But introduce yourself to as many things as possible and be prepared for change. It is inevitable. That's not meant to be in like a intimidating way, but it's going to be a lot easier if you are variable. I would say just don't procrastinate. If you have questions, ask them in class because you are not going to wait to the next class when the new assignment is coming and you're asking old questions about the last exam assignment. So you are going to find that your problem build up every single week. So solve problems on time and just uh, especially when you're doing a a, you know Maya thing that you need to render you need to act at least finish the assignment like ahead of time so that you can leave time for rendering and that's the thing yeah. um, sorry to, to build off of what Kimmy said I also think taking notes in class is very very helpful because you think you're gonna remember things but you won't like you will not you'll be like what did he say again press which button to do what and it just flies out it also helps you stay awake in class because in your classes we have like screens so the lights are all off so you can see the screens really clearly i have been caught sleeping multiple times in classes <laughs> um which isn't great don't don't do that don't do that <laughs> i'm admitting to it to live on youtube but um <laughs> Just try to keep yourself focused. Give yourself something to do while paying attention. Sometimes even like some teachers will let you doodle in class to keep your mind engaged. Um, and if you have any learning disabilities like dyslexia or ADHD, you can talk to your teachers about it and they will accommodate you. And we have an accommodations office if that is you as well. Um, I was also just going to call back to, like Kimmy said, that she had to take a leave of absence because you really struggled with the online experience. So like knowing your limitations and, and making those, setting those boundaries for yourself, I think is important. But, um, if you see them later, um, they're, they're friendly. You can talk to them. <laughs> Sam has gone on a few SVA destinations trips to LA and the Cannes Film Festival, so you could definitely talk to him later about that stuff too. But Jake's going to move us along and tell us what's next. Yes, thank you so much, Jimmy. Um, and thank you to uh, Samuel, Kimmy, Anna, Katie, and Sebastian. That was a very insightful and interesting conversation. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> so moving on. Um, Please stay seated. We're going to announce you by row, and then we're going to ask you to follow down the steps this way, go into the lobby where lunch will be served, and then your guides will lead you back the following way um, on the opposite stairs. So we'll be announcing people by group now. And I'll just note that while you're watching lunch, we have some great films to show you from, from past thesis projects.